On this episode of Inside Engineering, we talk with career and leadership program manager John Reinhardt about the value of career development, how failure can turn to success, and how learning impacts the brain. Inside Engineering, untold stories and fascinating people from the world of civil engineering. This is episode six, recorded in August 2019, Career and Leadership Development with John Reinhardt. Inside Engineering is brought to you by RKK. Learn more at rkk.com. All right, welcome back to another episode of Inside Engineering. This week, we have with us John Reinhardt. John is the Career and Leadership Program Manager here at RKK. And uh, he's gonna. We're gonna talk today about some of the things that he gets to do, how that brings value to our clients, um, and, and some of the 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 path that sort of led him to doing what he's doing now. Uh, so, John, welcome to the podcast. We're glad to have you here. Thanks, Tim. John, you are the career and leadership program manager. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> well, actually. I have been at RKK four days longer than my title has because one of the first things I was asked to do was come up with a title for what I was doing. And after going back and forth for those four days, we came up with the career and leadership program, really looking at, you know, we hire technically strong and great people. But what else is there that we can give them to not just be great engineers, great scientists, great planners, but great all around RK and K team members? Well, so I, I know the answer might, might seem obvious to some and maybe not to others, but what does what you do, how does that help our clients? Um, how does it help us win work? How does it uh, help us recruit better people. All of these things that I mean, really, we, you know, at the end of the day, we're a consulting firm um, l- looking to to do great work and win great work. How does what you do help our clients? Sure. So you can have the greatest ideas, come up with the greatest plans, but if you're not able to communicate those plans and communicate them to all stakeholders, not just other technical experts, but to the public, to the funders. Um, if you're not able to build and manage the teams that'll bring those plans to completion, you know, what, as much as I dislike the term, if you don't have the soft skills, you're not going to be able to make your hard skills a reality. And even though I hate the term soft skills, there really isn't a better term to come up with all those things that really are the key to being successful. Is, is there a, a, a story of success without going into too much detail about it, but that, that is sort of you've seen in your time here um, or elsewhere in your career that's, that really exemplifies what it means to, to do what you do? Sure. The, what I always say is that almost everybody has leadership potential in them. And as important as the workshops we offer, the coaching we do, It's really helping people see that potential, seeing their ability, and then giving them the opportunity to make it a reality. And I've seen numerous times where someone, you know, well, I'd like to learn a little bit more about leadership and maybe I can increase this skill. But it's really over the course of time, having them understand that they already are a leader. It's just, you know, having that motivation to step up, to take the lead, to really step up and step in. What's, what's something you wish you had known earlier on in your career? I, I think one of the biggest things is that, you know, you stop and we can sell what we do and we can point out the importance, but you have to give people the opportunity. You can teach the best classes, you can have the greatest content, you can bring in all kinds of experts, but if all at the end of the day it is, is just more workshop, more information, you've pretty much wasted your time and money. It's really giving the people the chance that here's what you've learned, now apply it. 
And if you don't give them the opportunity to use it, they're never really going to develop it beyond where they probably are right now. Right. What are some of the opportunities that team members have here uh, to grow their leadership skills or their career skills outside of working on a specific project? I, I think you look at what we offer and through the Cornerstone Learning Management System, we have over 300 topics available. Um, everything from running a better meeting to helping resolve conflict within your team to Steve Young Safety Library, um, you know, short five-minute videos up to hour-long self-paced courses, things you can do on your own. There are the technical writing and other workshops that we offer periodically throughout the year. And there's the opportunity to just give me a call or send me an email and saying, I'd like to work on this. What do you have that might help? I think the other thing, and it's really, you know, empowering people to take their own lead towards leadership. Have you offered to run a staff meeting? Have you asked if you can go along on a client meeting just to get a sense of how they work and, you know, really what our more experienced leaders do? Have you reached out to those experienced leaders and saying, you know, do you have time for a cup of coffee? I'd like to talk about how you got to where you are and maybe how I can get there as well. That's, that's some, uh, some really good advice. I mean, I, I think there's advice to be had, uh, you know, in career development for uh, everyone from a young and aspiring engineer all the way through uh, the later stages of the career. And I think th there's some great opportunities there. And, and you mentioned opportunities. You mentioned the Cornerstone uh, Learning Management System. I mean, everything within there is something that people can get professional development hours for. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the other things sort of stumbled into when I started. And, you know, makes sense that the professional development, the PDH, would also be part of the career and leadership path. But looking at what we offer, and we've archived and recorded all of the presentations for, I guess, the last three, four years, it's not just about do you have enough credits to get your license renewed? And really want to emphasize understanding what RK and K does. Um, you know, one of my favorite stories, we have one of the nation's leading experts on bats and did a PDH third Monday presentation for us. That actually helped lead to a new project in Florida because we had someone who sits in Pennsylvania but when they found a bridge that they wanted to do inspection on, were a little leery about, well, is this an environmental issue because there are bats on that bridge? We had a senior project manager who said, oh, no, we've got a guy here who can take care of that. Let's connect him to the client. So it's really about, you know, learning about what the company does. I, you know, a few weeks ago, there was the story, heavy rains expected in D.C. There was going to be flooding. If you attended our PDH presentations, you know we actually did the flood evacuation plan for the district. It's really just understanding everything we do from Miami up to Florida or up to Pennsylvania. And for those of you listening and, and wondering <laughs> what John is talking about with the, with the Batman and uh, people designing um, flood plans, we, we plan to have those people on the show coming up. Uh, um, Ryan Lieberher in, in Pennsylvania is our bat guy. And uh, Meredith Upchurch Church. is one of the people in, in our D.C. office that uh, we plan to talk to soon. And, and we're really looking forward to those episodes because they, they are so unique in it. But it's just a small part of what we do. Um, but it's really interesting and really does help our clients. I mean, you wouldn't think that bats would be an important thing to look for uh, when, when doing a bridge project or inspection. Or, but bats like to live in dark places and under bridges or dark places. And so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's great that I think you get to be at the forefront of, of providing those other opportunities for our experts to, to share. Yeah. And it really is the more that our employees know about everything we do, the better they can help our clients because you might be working on a traffic problem in North Carolina but we might have an archaeologist or a landscape architect, or there might be someone in graphics who can help with a public presentation. We have 
1,400 employees with all these great experiences and knowledge that every client can benefit from as long as those 1,400 know what's available within the company. Right, right. So I, I think one of the... One of the key challenges to, I mean, anything that you do, any initiative, but, you know, for us in communications and for you in career and leadership development is how do you know that what you're doing is successful or not? I mean, there's that famous saying for marketing is, I know that 50% of my marketing works. I just don't know which 50%. Um, and, and so I think that's often a challenge uh, that we face. How do, how are you going about uh, overcoming that challenge and identifying uh, the success, the career and leadership development success of our team members? I think for me, the easiest way to measure it is the number of times that someone comes to me and says, you know, so-and-so attended your last workshop or so-and-so talked to you about their career development. They recommended I come and see you. I, it's really hard to come up with metrics for what we do. Right. But anecdotally, the more people who are coming based upon, I was told by my supervisor that I should see you, or I heard from my coworker you were able to help them. That's the easiest way for me to see if what we're doing counts. I mean, we do get, and it always puts a smile on my face when you get the wanted to thank you for doing this workshop or wanted to thank you for this program. Uh, because of that, I, whatever. Normally, it's, uh, you know, I talk to my manager about what the next five years look like. We get the ones where, you know, someone will come in and say, well, I was considering a career change, but after going through your program, I realized what I really needed to do was talk to my supervisor and say, where do you see me in the next couple of years? You mentioned workshops. And so what are some of the workshops that we put on here? Uh, they, that are some other career and, and leadership opportunities. I uh, had mentioned the technical writing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do a program called Engagement Magic, which looks at, you know, what motivates you, um, you know, beyond the basics of salary and benefit. You know, is it a stable work environment? Is it constantly learning new things? Is it working with new people? Is it working with the same people? But really helping you recognize what your self-motivation is and how we can help you fulfill that. Uh, we also do the Center for Creative Leadership's uh, Talent Conversations workshops for our managers and directors. And again, looking at when you're talking to an employee about where you're going in your career, aligning that with what RK and K needs so that the two work perfectly together. There's, uh, there's also, there's Toastmasters. We have our Toastmasters clubs. Uh, currently, it's for the Baltimore office as well as the Virginia offices who participate remotely works beautifully. Uh, sounds a little bit different, but if you dial into one of their meetings and you see how they pass the responsibilities around between the different offices, it, it's really fun to watch. We also encourage any employee that, you look for your local Toastmasters club. Um, our ultimate goal is that you spend a year with your local Toastmasters club, come back to your RK and K office, and start up an office club there. Uh, the partners have been incredibly supportive about the Toastmasters efforts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is Dale Carnegie training as well? We also offer Dale Carnegie. We do their two day high impact presentations workshops, we use their management program. We, like I said, starting with the what's available on the learning management system up through the workshops that we offer, the programs we can send you to, up to and including, you know, we did, had uh, the University of North Carolina come in and do a day-long negotiations workshop for us. Wow. There are all kinds of opportunities out there. We just need to find the right fit for each individual. Right, right. Now, that's really cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to be somewhere where it's, it's clear uh, that your your boss and your boss's boss all the way mm -hmm. up to the top of the company cares about your professional development beyond just what can you do for me on a project um it, it's refreshing yeah and, and really from a client perspective or from a public perspective 
wouldn't you rather work with someone who knows how to write a great email or you know was responsive to your phone calls versus someone who's just technically strong but doesn't necessarily have those soft skills right absolutely all right john i'm going to throw a question at you here throw away tim it's an important question because it shows uh it tells us a little something about you john Reinhardt, what is something that you are curious about right now in life? Uh, besides the fact that I've always wanted to learn how to weld, uh, um, I think professionally what I've been curious about recently has been the connection between leadership development and training and how it actually both impacts brain development and how the brain reacts to that type of training looking at it more than just we're offering you information to truly looking at how do we help you look at a new way to think. Uh, some of the research that's been done on intrinsic motivation, some of the research that's been done on the key role that happiness plays. Um, one of my favorite co quotes from Sean Anker is that if you're looking for happiness to follow success, you'll never get there. But if you realize happiness is the predecessor to success, you're already there. Um, and really seeing how just your motivation and how your brain works impacts how you learn and what you learn. That's good stuff. That makes me well, want to go, you. that makes me want to go be curious about that too. Um, and that's available on the Cornerstone Learning there, Management oh, System. That was a, we that we was, have that information. That was a sneaky plug, John. Uh, thank well, you. but in the in the show notes for this, we'll uh, hopefully John can provide us with a a link or two to some of that research he's been looking at, or some articles that can uh, spark some interest, and we'll we'll throw those in the show notes for, show notes for this episode. Um, all right, John, I got another question for you. Okay, okay, <laughs> this is. And, and I'm, I'm happy that I get to ask this of other people and not other people ask this of me. Uh, what is something that you have failed at? Gee, Tim, that's, I, that's the toughest one, either coming up with something or narrowing the list down. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, I, and, sure. and I ask this because I believe that, you know, you learn from failure. It's, it's, if you didn't learn from failure... That was a, a an even bigger failure in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would say that that's a really good question. Um, let's see, picking all the failures, what was the uh, most memorable one? Okay, so I I would call this a failure story with a redemption at the end. What that and, we have to have a and, redemption. You know, since can I mention merits here? Observing, uh -huh. she will appreciate this one. So. I actually, it took 19 years for me to get my college degree. Um, and the fact that I started halftime as a senior in high school makes it even more impressive. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell and I started at Dickinson College, officially enrolled as freshmen the same year. She dropped out after one year. Um, I finished my senior year still needing two credits, which took 14 years to go back and complete. So if I said the in, for those 14 years, the failure would have never been completing my college degree. The redemption story of it is my wife who looked at me and said, why are you being so stupid? Go back at the two credits, get this taken care of. And really turning that sort of failure black mark into a really good story to tell over a drink at time i'm glad i asked okay all right john is there anything else i haven't asked you about that you think is uh is worth mentioning in 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 your world of career and leadership i i think the one thing that we haven't really talked about is you know when you look at this type of training for the pdh credits you need them to renew your license. It's really easy to make that a priority. A writing class, a public speaking course, talking to a director or senior manager about maybe a mentoring relationship, that's easy to push to the side. But if you look at the really successful people, not just at RKK, elsewhere, you know, they find the time to do those things. Uh, you know, the 
quote that I have blown up on a giant poster outside my office is from Tom Peters, Baltimore native and civil engineer before he became a leadership guru. And his advice is hang out with freaks. You know, find different people to hang out with, not just the people you work with, but mm-hmm. from different walks of life, from different professions. Because if you're not hanging out with those freaks, the only ideas you're going to get are the ones you already have. Yeah. Yeah. Get outside your own bubble. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's good. All right, John, it's time now for our pick of the week. John is going to recommend something to us. Uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but he has he has a wide range of, uh, he has a lot of freedom here to pick something that he thinks all of us will find interesting. So, John. So this is my very broad pick of the week. I grew up in the country, still live in the country, and, you know, pre-internet, entertainment was hard to come by. So the volunteer firehouse dinners, the festivals during the summer, those were big deals. And my pick of the week is find a local event, find a Saturday morning farmer's market, find the local arts and crafts festival. Find something where you can get out and learn more about your community and your neighbors. That's great stuff. Thank you. Now I've got to go to a farmer's market on Saturday. The kids will love it. It'll be good. They will. They get fresh vegetables. Yeah. You know? and, and there's other stuff there now, too. It's, so it's, it's not just produce. It's not just produce. There's like scented candles and things. Scented candles. Yeah. There we go. Organic gluten-free oh scented candle. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached an, <laughs> the conclusion of a, another episode of Inside Engineering. Uh, thanks, John, for joining us in the studio this week. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you all next week on another episode of Inside Engineering. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Inside Engineering comes out every Tuesday and we're available hopefully on your favorite podcasting platform. We're trying to be in as many places as possible. So please take a minute to rate and review the show. You can also stream on demand at our website at rkk.com slash podcast, where we also have just a real short survey asking for some feedback on the show because we want to make it as good as possible and as valuable to you as we can. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.